Let's now add the final bricks of our game. Over here in the sprites I have a sprite multi, 64 by 24, origin point is centered, same as all the other ones, and the sprite just has these three little balls in it. And then I've also got a sprite life up, same dimensions, origin is centered, and it's a little pink block that has a heart in it. I've then created objects out of those in the bricks. I've got the object multi, visible, solid, and its parent is object brick one. And then I've got object life up, visible, solid, its parent is also object brick one. And then in room one, I've just added one of each in an easy to reach area, which will make testing it very quick. And so now let's open up the object multi as our first brick. And we will begin with adding an event and a collision with our object ball. And since we have object brick one selected as our parent, we've already got the behaviors in place for destroying the brick. But with multi ball, we want to create two new balls. So let's go over to main one and bring in a create instance. We are going to apply this to other, so the ball, and we will have it spawn a new object ball, zero, zero, relative. So since this is applying to the other, it should create a new ball at the origin point of the object ball when it collides with our object multi. Click OK, and we can just basically copy this and paste it. So now we have two, and now we can set this same system up for the laser so that when our lasers destroy a multi-ball brick, it also spawns them. So let's just come over here and duplicate this event, collision, and we will set it to our object laser. You'll remember though that in our object ball create event, we set it up so that as soon as the ball is created, it goes off at a right angle. So when this creates two new instances of the ball, they will also go in that angle. So let's close this and reopen our object ball. And in our create event with the start moving in a direction, let's open that up. And let's also select this upper left. Remember when multiple arrows are selected, it will randomly choose which one it wants to go in. And so now our balls will go in different directions. Although it is possible that both of them will shoot off in the same direction. It also means that at the beginning of a level, when we shoot the ball off the paddle, we won't necessarily know which direction it's going in. So it's not really a perfect setup, but it'll do for now. We can close this, and then we need to open up our object life up. This will be very similar in that it needs to apply to both the ball and the lasers. So let's add event, collision, object ball. Let's come over to our score tab, select our set lives, and we will give a positive one and relative, so we will add one to our life score. And then we can duplicate this event, collision, find our object laser, and it will do the same thing. So we can hit OK, and we can run the game. And let's see which direction it goes off in. It goes off to the left, OK. And you can see down there at the bottom, I've got a new life now. It's great. Let's see if I can get the ball over to the multi-ball paddle brick. This might take a while. This is another situation. Okay, there we go. And we see that we've spawned multiple balls now. And they will all change when we hit that uh, explosion power up because that explosion is applying itself to an object ball and they both count. But we see that even though I've let the other two balls go off, I have not lost a life yet. We've also got a problem where I've once again cleared the room and uh, not won or lost. That's because this time around the explosion destroyed the last brick in the room. Well, we can fix this the same way we did before. So let's reopen our object laser, find the object brick collision and this number instances, go to next room, let's just select those and copy them. 
close that out and then we will come to our object hitbox find the object one object brick one collision and then we can paste them but we need to make sure it is underneath the destroy instance this destroy instance is the other which is the brick so we'll only know if we won if that brick is destroyed and just in case you don't want to copy and paste this to recap this test number of instances is looking for if object brick one is equal to zero so hit OK and that whole thing might seem really convoluted we could in fact just create an object say maybe we could put it in the life counter we could add a step event and then we could have in the test instances equal to zero go to next room and so our life counter object would be taking control of all of this and since we would have it here we wouldn't need it in our laser object our ball object the hitbox object however since it's running every step to check and see if there are instances in the room then it's also processing this event when it doesn't need to be so it's really up to you We can delete this event because we don't want it as you go on to make games you will find that there are often better more efficient and more effective ways of doing things but our game should work as intended now all that's left then is to add some sound, some music, do some last minute polishing up, so we'll get into that next video.